everybody, it's Mark Messier, and you're listening to Blue Shirt on the Ground Show, the number one Rangers podcast. Make sure you tune in and find out all the latest news. Let's go Rangers. What? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! German? Forget it, he's rolling. And it ain't over now. Because when the going gets tough, a tough get going! Who's with me? Let's go! Come on! Ah! Good evening, Blue Shirt Undergrounders. This is your Game 4 wrap-up show exclusively here in the Patreon group on Facebook. Jim and Eddie with you on a Wednesday night. Good evening, Eddie. Thank you for waiting for me. I apologize for the delay. How are you this evening, sir? Oh, pretty good. I'm hanging in there, man. You know, uh, I didn't mind waiting. What up? What the hell else am I gonna do? I Six. Like to be, we're here with the undergrounders. They're the people uh, I love. Everybody who, who attends our shows, but especially these guys, I feel like it's like Olive Garden. It's like family, right? Right. When I'm here with at, the undergrounders at six fifty three, uh, I was trying to cl- finish a clip for the show. And the program froze, then my computer froze, then nothing would happen. I couldn't even shut it off, and then it was just one thing after oh, another. <laughs> then I had no internet, and then for, for whatever reason, it wasn't connected to the internet. I had to reboot the modem. Then, uh, oh. just, so I appreciate those of you who have stuck it out, and you are here. And sorry for being late. I'm going to get right down to it. And then we're going to talk baby, go. And then we'll talk about the game. And I can talk Frank because you guys, you guys, you people in here who spend your hard-earned money. Okay? I can talk turkey with you guys cuz you're the diehards and the diehard. You're here tonight. You've been here for every show, win or lose. You guys are here. You're putting in your time. How the fuck can you call yourself a Ranger fan? And you're telling me last night this series is over. We're done. The tide has turned. They have all the momentum. It's over. We're not as good. We can't keep up. I have no patience, no tolerance, no nothing. What's up, Peter Fox from Dublin, Ireland? Ireland? Peter Fox. I got no, this is no, I have no time for anybody looking for a lifeboat. None. We are, it is 2-2, coming home tomorrow night. Next two out of three are at home. This is the, I don't want to hear that they can't win this series. I will always, you know what? If, if they break my heart again, as they have 51 of the 52 years of my existence, so be it. But I am never, ever giving up on the team in the Eastern Conference Finals. Never. 
You're giving up on this team that has come back time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. And you're just going to say, fuck it, they're done. I'm done. I can't take this anymore. They're, they're not as good as Tampa. Oh, and not as good as Tampa. I'm in it till the end. You want to jump off? You want to bail on a Titanic? That's fine. The band's still playing. We still got music. Eddie's band is still playing. It's funny because I didn't talk to Jim uh, at all ever. It, there are these people are emotionally emotionally stunted. I don't Triples. know how to be a fan and give up and say Triples. it's over. I'm packing my bags. I, I'm the, this team who uh, a week ago. I'm just glad we're there here. Everything is. You know, it's just gravy. And then as soon as it's two games to nothing and you think it's going to be easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy, and it turns out to be a tough road to hoe, you bail like a bitch. I'm sick of I can't watch the social media anymore. I can't do it. You saw in our own thread yesterday, I said, oh, you know, we'll regroup and we'll come back because I saw so many negative shit. I said, but then after it got worse, then I said, you know, I can't read all this negative stuff. They blame everybody. That I mean, uh, I would, you know, Galant's father, his mother. You know, I mean, it was everybody was under the microscope, and we've. But I, I just don't see how you can just throw your hands up at this team when it's two to two, when they've played so well at home, and they have the next two out of three at home. Yeah, there are things that have to be corrected. Would I have liked to have seen them gone down to Tampa and sweep? Of course. But you know what? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. You know, we are the we are the scrappy insurgent. We are not we are not the Colorado Avalanche. We're just going to come out and dominate everybody on the way to multiple sweeps. Everything is scratch and claw. This is a scratch and claw team. And I'm not just talking about social media. I'm talking about I'm talking about people, again, not in this group. Some of them you know. Some people whose, whose opinions I respect and their range of fandom I respect. But last night, the bailout, the people jumping ship. Eh. Meh. Well, I, I feel the same way. I think people just don't understand. Yes. Uh, we were up to nothing, but there's another team on the other side that doesn't want to get swept. And somehow they, they, they so, and sometimes they win games. And the Rangers didn't look so great in those two games, uh, offensively lackluster. But still, we won the first round. How many games? Seven. Second round. Seven. Seven. What do you think they were going to, it was, I mean, these are, as you go on, they get more, it gets tougher. Uh, you've got Tampa Bay, who is, like you said, we're the insurgents. They're the reigning two-time champions. Right. It's not going to be easy. And I know you you get all emotionally butthurt that they don't, uh, you know, make you happy. But that's what, we're not in for that. We're in for the road. Uh, it still can work out. It, there's no way, to, you know. It, if you want to be happy all the time, quit watching sports. Right. That's all I could tell you. Because I don't care what team you root for. There's heartache. There's, there's They're going to break your heart. I don't care what team you root for. I don't care if you root for Alabama in college sports. I don't they care if you root for some team. soccer team or, you know, some NASCAR racer. Every one of them is going to lose at some point. You're just going to have to get through it. This, is, this isn't supposed to be easy. This is the, the hardest trophy. In, it's the hardest trophy in sports to win. And there's a reason for that. Well, I want to the to be show easy. Because I'm sure these are some of the people that bailed when the Rangers were down against Carolina or bailed I mean, when it, every series. You know, I could understand if it, I could somewhat understand it if this was some eighth seed team that just kind of squeaked into the playoffs by the skin of their ass, had to back in, needed three teams to lose the last week of the season, and all of them did, and they're getting blown out by the first, by the number one seed, you know, and they're down three games to none. Uh, you know, I can understand if you get upset, and you, you know, you're down, you're downtrodden, but 
How can you give on this team after all this team has given given you over the last month and a half, and you're just gonna two two? I'm done. I can't. I can't. They're not gonna win. I'm done. Series is over. Come on. <laughs> we're coming. We're coming home. If I told you a week ago, and I know Don Card Don said it a minute ago, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the same thing. If I told you a week ago to be coming home for Game Five at two two, who doesn't take that? Who doesn't Who doesn't take that? We're right where we want to be. This is what they played all year for to get home ice advantage. Here it is. This is why you have it. This is why you win those games. This is why you lift those weights and uh, all all summer, men. That's what Bill Parcells used to tell his Giants. This is why you lift all them weights. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I I agree totally, Jim. I, I don't know. Maybe these fans just emotionally can't handle it. Maybe they got some delusions that the Rangers were going to sweep them after a two nothing lead going into Tampa Bay. I don't know. And 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 I understand. I said it. I said it on here or, or the other show. I said it on one of the shows when you're up two nothing. And, you know, things are looking pretty good. You know, it's easy to start, you know, the sugar plums start dancing in your head. And, you, and you, of course, you start. Of course, we were all thinking, oh, we're going to go to Tampa. And, you know, of course, they can win two games in Tampa. Of course. That's human nature. That's why we, That's you know, if you can't believe that, you might as well not even, again, don't watch sports. If you can't muster up that belief, why bother? <coughs> I don't know. I just think maybe it's a defense mechanism. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I'm not. I, I'm not that type of fan. I'm. Not, I'm going to watch it to the end and and stick it out and and root for my team. The team is uh, is been a surprise. I again, that have had a wonderful season. Yeah, I know it's hard to watch the Rangers not really give you a lot to root for, especially in. in and last night's game and the game before where they really did not muster much pressure, although they, they got a lot of shots in the game last night. Nothing of danger and... and uh, not a lot of great shots. Yeah, not a lot of great shots. And also the... But we have see, been here before. Right. We, we've been we, here... In the last three weeks, we've been here. Bad games on the road where they don't muster anything... And 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 yeah, they look dead in the water. And but every time they get up and they look at Tommy Gunn and they say, "One more round." I didn't hear no bell. Right? How can you give up on a team that does that for you? You know, I, I just I I don't have it in me. I, I don't have that. In, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't You're have that. A different fan. And like I don't have that in this chat room. That's well, just well, not my DNA. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying every Ranger fans like that, but there are some Ranger no. fans who. I but, don't know. They may have emotional problems that I don't know. I have to get Doctor B in there and diagnose her. But right, Doctor B is here for down. diagnosis. You <laughs> could be doubtful. You could be like, but to uh, actually go on the record as saying this series is over. Oh yeah, that is just completely nuts. I Come mean, on. it could turn. It could turn around on a dime. I mean, do I think the Rangers are a little bit tired or at least looked a little bit tired? Yes. And we'll get into that before we talk to him. But any Ranger fan who's giving up and throwing in the towel right now. Don't come is, back. Is a fool. Don't come back. Don't come back. Because this is how it is. I know it's been, you know, four or five years since since they made the playoffs. And I know it's been eight years. Well, no, uh, seven since we had a, a real run, which was also the Eastern Conference Finals, which was also against Tampa, which they also had home ice advantage against. <laughs> but this is how it is. There are ups and downs in every series. I, I mean, you know, sweeps are rare, real rare in our history. Yeah. And I don't want to hear about the could have's and the should have's and the this and they did this. and The, the next game is all that counts. That crowd is up. The Rangers have been playing a lot better at home. The power play is lethal if they get some chances. They've got to improve the five-on-five. Five. I don't know what is going on. I mean, Jim, I mean, this has been a season-long thing. It has. 
and I, it's not like the Rangers play in a defensive shell, although they had they played right defensively this year. But why? All these super skilled players. And, I, I, you know, maybe they don't have – I think one of the components that they don't have that they've had in, in previous years is they don't – you know, Adam Fox is a great uh, playmaker. He's, you know, he's awesome. But other than him, who really is a defenseman that kind of takes charge offensively and maybe gets into the zone? And they don't really have that right now. And I think that's one of the components – of the five on five, but when you got stars like Kreider and oh man, I saw so much anti Panarin stuff. I just was getting sick of it. There's so much blame, and then I got we got good people in here. People are very Josh down Gim- on Panarin. Oh yeah, I I love Josh Gimbel, but you know he didn't want Stroman, so now he's got uh, Filipino at center. He's got uh, he's got Steve Rooney in. Now he hates uh, Steve Rooney. Now he hates Reeves. It's like, well, you know, I know it's great to hate a player, but if you don't get a lot of shots on five ago, I think it's more of a team thing than the one guy. Oh, Panarin. And I, I, I didn't even listen to it, Jim. Tell me if this was, oh, he gets a useless goal at the end of the game. I mean, it's so predictable. What well, that was what they used to say about Rick Nash, right? Yeah. But was it, but was it really useless? No, it cut the deficit uh, to 3-1. I mean, you know. A two goal, a, a two goal lead, a, or a two goal deficit with three minutes, it's not crazy. Not crazy. No. Not for this team. This team can score. This team can score goals in bunches. We've seen them do it. I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what's going on five on five. I don't know if it's a mindset. I don't know if it's in their heads at this point. I don't know if they're just sitting around waiting for another for the next power play to come along. I don't know. Oh, oh um, here we go. I, I think I think they I think they were all guilty, or a lot of them were guilty last night. Too much east west. Those passes at the blue line drive me absolutely batshit crazy. Those cross ice passes at the blue line that will get intercepted nine times out of ten. Get the puck deep. You I am I am such a proponent. Of, of getting the puck deep and doing all your dirty work down behind the goal, not these passes back and forth across the blue line and from, and from the half wall to the half wall, get the puck deep and work from there. Get it deep, get it deep. You're never going to give up a goal. If you get the, if you just get the puck deep and work it there. And also, you know what? Panera could become a hero tomorrow night. And then did I hear nothing from these people? Did we did we not hear all this same garbage about Panera yes. until we scored the overtime goal in Game Seven against the Penguins? Right, exactly. It's Look, like Groundhog it, Day, and it's the same reaction from Ranger fans. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and tell you he's played his best no, hockey I'm in the playoffs, but I'm not gonna just you know he's but, the be all and end all of the Rangers' woes. That's not right. True. There, you know, he's he. he the, there's some room on, on that uh, on that lifeboat that he's in. You know, he's not alone. There's a couple of guys that are, you know, got to get going. It can't we we can't just wait for Mika Zibanejad to score a goal all the time. You yeah. know, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to see a little more from Andrew Cop. You know, I, I'd like to see a couple more goals from Alexi Lafreniere. I mean, for all the hard work he's doing. Third I'd like to see another goal or two from Capo Caco. There are a lot of guys I'd like to see. The another third goal line has been pretty quiet the last two games. I, I will say, Eddie, I, I'm sorry. The, 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 just roll three lines tomorrow. <laughs> just a lot of people are- <laughs> killing them. Killing them. That, that fourth line is so slow and just what? generating nothing. I don't know how I healthy agree. Goodrow is. I agree. I don't it's know good. how healthy Goodrow is. The, but he's a gamer. He's a good row. And I, I know I've belabored. We've bel- I've certainly belabored this point. But why is Ryan Reeves? He's he's locked in. He cannot be moved out of the lineup. He is essential in Gallant's plan. This guy comes in. All I hear in the middle of the season, after they make the trades to get the, uh, the free agents there at the deadline, Oh, it takes 28 guys to win a Stanley Cup. It takes all of us to win. He says with the same lineup. 
apparently only takes 21 guys. <laughs> the other seven are uh, sitting on their tuckuses. Now, and I'm not know, saying... Let me just finish this. I'm not ahead, saying I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Julian Gauthier is the answer. But maybe one game? Can we see him one game instead of Reeves, who doesn't hit, takes stupid penalties, and and and, and adds nothing? He's the slowest guy in the league. And Rooney looks terrible, and I like Rooney. Steven Rooney. <laughs> Kevin I Rooney. Mean- wouldn't it be wouldn't it be a good time to maybe put a guy in the lineup who skates really well and skates in a straight line and just go I mean he goes to the net the goals haven't come for him but there's no question that he's a great skater and goes straight to the net maybe he makes something happen I don't know but that fourth line it's terrible and I know I know people People got on me the other night when I talk, on the big show when I talked about this, but you know what? I'm sorry. Go back and look. Fourth lines win championships. Good fourth lines contribute. You took a lot of heat for that. I did. You wanted Reeves off. Oh, how dare the, the beloved Ryan Reeves. It's I understand. Just a, I like what he brings, but not, not now. Save it for next season. I, I, I want to see an alternative just for a game, Jim, just once. I don't care if it's Brodzinski. I don't think he's a winger, though. Brodzinski, I don't even care if it's the keg. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I said that last night. I would have. I would have taken. I would have taken. Why is he so set on this guy? He's terrible. And he's and 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 now now he's taking a penalty every game. He can't. You know, he he didn't. I don't think he took. I don't have his numbers in front of me. I don't think he took a lot of penalties during the regular season. But now he seems to be good for one a night. He takes more minutes. Whether they're bad calls or not. He's getting he's getting one a game against a lethal power play. And Jen's right here too. When he broke up Crides and Zabinajet and put Panarin on that line, what? I didn't I didn't have a problem with that. I did. I didn't have a problem with that because I thought for the for the early part of the second period when he did that, I thought it was working. I thought that they had something going on. Briefly, I thought well, it's it it's better than doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It's better than doing nothing, but just, I, I, I don't, I just, that fourth line just isn't, it's just not getting anything done. And every, and then on the first goal, everybody blamed the fourth line. Listen, they got caught puck watching and it, it sucks when their fourth line gets a goal against our fourth line, which we know is hopeless right now. And then Zach Bogosian I think he's my age. This guy was like a draft pick of the Thrashers. All right. This is how old this guy is. He goes around Justin Braun like he like he was Bobby Orr. And Justin Braun was like Frank Bave. I mean, this is ridiculous. Ah. I mean, the fourth line, if you're gonna take penalties and look foolish and become puck watching, you got you got to go. So maybe you free line the what? Go ahead. No, 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 finish your thought. I, I have a question. No, I just thought, like, you know, if the fourth line's going to take penalties and look foolish, then what's the sense? Maybe they should roll three lines. Right. It's not going to happen. Especially but- in the fourth period. Uh, third period, sorry. Third, when you go into the third period and you're down, were well, they down three to, three nothing or two nothing going into the third three period nothing. last night? Why, why is the fourth line seeing the ice? They're not generating anything. They're not drawing any penalties. They're not forechecking. So what are they doing? And they only play eight minutes a night. Can't you fill those eight minutes with some other players? Reeves had nine minutes. Uh, Rooney had 10 minutes. All right, so 10 minutes. Mott, 13 minutes. And they Goodrow, 15 minutes. But guy, yeah, they're killing penalties and guys moving up and down the, the, the lineup. But if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Tampa Bay's fourth line is uh, Maroon Mm -hmm. and Belmore and I think uh, Riley Nash. Does that sound right? I'll check for you in a second. I'm pretty sure that's their fourth line. Do, 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 I think it's do, do. I think it's Nash, Riley Nash, Belmore, and Pat Maroon. It's Maroon, 
uh, Belmare. Belmare, I'm sorry. I don't know what they. Uh, I guess it's Riley Nash. I'm, what they got here doesn't make any sense. It's Corey. They say Corey Perry's on the fourth line. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But I'm pretty sure those that that's their fourth line. But you know what? Every time they're on the ice, I know they're on the ice. Maroon's doing something. You know, there's a reason why Maroon's won three cups or however many cups he's won in a row. Two, three, four, 12. I don't know. Was he on the 75 well, Canadians? They did a whole uh, documentary on him after they scored. <laughs> like, wait. Uh, uh, you know, what, what, Riley, Nash, those guys are noticeable. Those guys are noticeable. They're in our zone. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So I, I'm just saying it just it, might it, be time for it just might be time for a fresh face on that fourth I line. Think, I, I think he's just a stubborn guy. He's like, you know, we got this far with the same lineup. I'm just going to throw him out there again. And even though the eye test and the stats did not bear it out. I mean, I look at the hits. I go, I, I just, please, why? It's like, does Reeves could take a break. He can come back the next game. It's not an execution. He could come back. I just don't get it. Uh, yeah. Now, what's what's the deal with uh, Heedle Bailey over here? He's a little fragile again. What happened? Uh, well, last I heard, game time decision. Half of the year. Right. Strom and, and Heedle are game time decisions. So, he was, he was, and in the press conference, he's all smiles today. Oh, was he? Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, glad he's smiling. He was, uh, and he was playing Secret Squirrel again with them, and it's a yeah. big joke. I'm menstruating over here. I'm glad he's I'm glad he's having a good time. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, I mean, let's, let's, I mean, I know we're all pointing, but that is the most obvious thing. And the Rangers, I just, I, I think people, I think people are too quick to dismiss the importance of a good fourth line and what it can do. I think people are too quick to go, ah, it's the fourth line. What's the big deal? Ah, he's no. just a fourth liner. If that's our biggest problem, then you know, no, we're you're all not right. A good but fourth line, all the people. I, I, I just, that. I think there's too much of a mindset that the fourth line is like the guy that bats ninth in the batting order, or you know, who was our fourth line? When we went to the cup that year. Carcillo, uh, Dominic Moore, and somebody. I can't think of the other um, guy. Uh, oh shit. Um, was it Oscar Lindbergh? Maybe. No. What the hell? Fuck, the guy was good too. Um, Derek Dorsett. Yeah, that was, was that like the last good fourth line we had. Derek Dorsett. That was a good. That was a good fourth good line. Fourth that fourth line. line made a difference. Boyle, Matt said. We hated Daniel Carcillo until he got here, but he was a he was a he was a big cog Carbon. in that run. He's hitting people. Moore was a, a very good contributor. Contributor. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dorset hit everything too. He was a tough hombre. Yeah. And you could see it made a difference. And I think in some of the series, the fourth line's played okay. But you got to be better to get scored on, you know, less than four minutes in by the other team's fourth line. Then you take a penalty. It, it, it's just, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. I mean, you know, you go back and look at look at your history and teams teams that win championships have it's be, you know it's a big their fourth line is a big part of it. You know, Boston, you know, the, the year they knocked the Rangers out of the playoffs, their fourth line killed us. The, the year the Devils knocked us out, their fourth line killed us. What's up, Rock? Rock. I just I, I just think people are I don't understand why people don't. I just because think they're ignorant. Diminish. They're ignorant to the game of hockey. I hate to say it, but that's the truth. In the playoffs, especially, you've got to have an effective fourth line because a lot of times these goals come from fourth liners. Look, Pat Maroon scored. I mean, right. you've got to have a you've got to have like that eight minutes, ten minutes again where they come in with a four check, 
They give the guys a breather, the, the first three lines a breather, and they're effective and not a detriment. That's and, all you're looking for. Right. Bangs for not, bodies, punish some defensemen. Right, and, and where they're not hemmed into their own zone the entire time. Right. Rock is exactly right. Rock joined us later. I said, Ryan Reeves, I don't know, understand why he's he's married to this lineup, that he cannot sit for one game. I mean, is he going to be that offended? Uh, or Gallant is just stuck in some OCD thing where he's got to start the same lineup because he thinks eventually he's going to win. Put Gauthier in there. Put McKegg in there. I know, just for one game. I'm not saying... It, but he shouldn't be a mortal lock. The guy doesn't hit. He's slow as shit, and he's taking penalties. Oh, for three. I would. I think you're going to see Michael Greenblatt talking about Zach Jones. I think you're going. Hey, Mike. You want Zach Jones? To, oh, Schneider to play forward shifts? No, I'm not into that. I think Zach Jones is part of the equation next no, year. This, this this is this isn't a time to be experimental. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> real desperate when you put Lindy right. Ruff on the wing or Stu Bickle on the wing. <laughs> Lindy that's, Ruff, that's telling <laughs> Lindy that, Ruff. Lindy Let's Ruff. try Greshner at center. Yeah, that, that's desperation. <laughs> Damn, but um, and again, I just I, I didn't see anything last night that that wasn't correctable, right. you know, just five on five, put some pressure on God just, for God's sakes. Yeah. I mean, I they're mean, getting chances. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting, Steve they're getting Evans, some odd man like rushes, game. you know, the, the first goal on, on Igor last night, I think that was Maroon's goal. It was a bad one. Kind of a little roller along the ice that, you know, He's got to close his legs occasionally. The 900 save is not good in a playoff. So <laughs> you can't win when you got your goalie gives it. I mean, I know they put up that stat between the, the, the legs. That was big. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Jesse, but the guy's a monster. I mean, first of all, let's just, first of all, you got to give your due to Tampa Bay. Their big guys are coming through. Kucherov is. I don't care what you say, and this is just my opinion. Well, who's else's opinion would it be? But my opinion, right. Kucherov is better than any Ranger. Total package. He's a bona fide superstar. He's got the cup rings. To, to, so they got to find a way to try to neutralize this guy. And on the breakaway, I'm not going to blame Shesterkin for giving up a breakaway on Kucherov. Stamkos, I think, can be neutralized. I mean, he's just – he's he's really – I mean, he's an awesome shooter. Right. And I didn't think they got really dominated in that game. It's just they were fortuitous. They capitalized on their chances. They didn't take a lot of penalties, which their coaches advised them to not take penalties. Now, all of a sudden, Reeves is undisciplined. This guy, you, you, now, see, I'm not. Rock, you joined the slate. Jim, tell him about Panarin. <laughs> what do I tell him? What do you want me to tell him? Ryan Reeves has 12 minutes in a 12 penalty minutes All right. in the series. Don't, in the, in don't the, you forget uh, right. about Panarin's goal in game seven there, Rock? Right. We still got a way to go. They're going home tomorrow. Hopefully you'll be there and rooting Panarin as he gets a big goal there. It's a long playoff series. They're up, they're down. They're, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not pointing the blame finger at anybody. I mean, a lot of, you know, it was a team effort of futility. Right. Five on five sucks. I don't know why the five on five sucks. It sucked all year. It sucks now. Uh, I don't know. Turnovers, too, will kill you, too. North, south, you know, they need to play more north, south hockey. And, you know, start getting to the net. They got to start doing what Tampa's doing. See, he did it too. He fell right into the trap. We said the same thing. Oh, it was a useless goal. It was 3 1. Which I see again. You're going too far. You're going too far, my friend. I'm not giving up. Okay, so we'll move on from that. 
Uh, so I won't quit on this team because they won't quit. Right. I love how the, the, <laughs> the thing is, there's no quit in New York. That's the slogan, right? But right. the quit in Ranger fans. Right, right. I'm oh, done, they're bailing. I'm done. Didn't I hear about this in Carolina? Oh, uh, they're barely. If they win two games, it'll be a miracle. I heard that shit, too. And I, you know, I agree, Kim. I agree. They've got to earn power plays. They've got to work harder to get the power plays. But, and again, that's one of the things that a good fourth line does. A fourth line can 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 pound you in your own zone, and that's and that's how you draw penalties. That's how you draw penalties. You draw penalties by going hard to the net. You draw penalties by cycling in the zone. You draw. That's how you draw penalties. That's why you have yeah. to have a good fourth line, right? Right. That's what the, you know. So, but we, basically, we've got, you know, we've been dealt the cards. We're we're in the we're, we're in country now. We're in the the thick. We're in the weeds. We're we're in country. We're in country. <laughs> we're battling, and uh, yeah, I, I people blame refs. Of, I think the officiating has been decent. I saw that you when they went to review on that one uh, no goal. You were like, ah, this is a goal because Toronto. Uh, no, I said I said if this isn't a goal, I'd be amazed. Because Toronto has been so, because, and honestly, you know, and we had the radio. I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't take ESPN last night, so I, I put, I had it synced up with the radio feeds. We we're listening to Sam and Dave, and um, and Dave Maloney was giving every argument, every explanation why that's no goal, and he's like, you know, the puck is under his pad. But you can't see the puck go across the line. And I'm like, it just doesn't matter. I'm like, you throw out all convention when it comes to NHL officiating. And, you know, it just seems to go against the Rangers more often than not. And, you know, just when you think, oh, no, that's got to be a goal because this, then they'll come up with something else. Or it's not a goal because it is. And then they'll come up with something else. I mean, honestly, Igor's leg is on the puck. And the leg goes in the net. I don't see how he can say the puck's not with his leg in the net. Where's the puck? If the puck goes, you know, I don't know. Cage goes in the water. Shark's in the water. You go in the cage. <laughs> Our shark. <laughs> you know, I don't see how it doesn't work. It wasn't easy, Matt. And and for some reason, the radio keeps falling behind the TV. I was able to pause on the, on the ESPN app on the fire stick. So that's how I was able to. And I just kind of, you know, I'll wait for a face-off, and right before they drop the puck, I'll hit pause. And then when whoever's calling on the radio says, and you know, there's the face-off, then I hit play. But for some reason, the TV kept jumping ahead of the radio, and I, I, I don't know why, but Sam was very good on the radio. Sam yeah. was very good on the radio. But unfortunately, last night was his last night, I guess. Kenny's um, coming back. Well, Dom is bringing up... Uh... The the home ice horn guy having a premature ejaculation with the horn. Rangers ought to blow their horn five times tomorrow night. Goal or not, just blow it. it everybody was so annoyed. play. It stopped playing. It brought the face off out to center ice. Oh, they were Whoops. happy. Those those officials. Of, Whoops! Officials were pissed off. Cooper was and pissed off. Stamkos and Kucherov coming in on a two on one. Whoops! Yeah. <laughs> Whoops! Stop play. Stop play. And then it's like, you know, I was I was thinking back to those dumb Carolina fans who don't know how to actually think unless the scoreboard or the or the sound lets it. They probably would have been saying, review that. That was right. because they have no brains. Igor goes into the Igor goes into the corner to play the puck. He drops his stick. He falls down. The net's open. Stamp goes out. Oh. Sorry. Stop the play. <laughs> That's right. All right, blow it, John Riggs, blow it every time Tampa crosses the blue line. So ridiculous. I don't know if you noticed today, guys. I want to shut the light off here. You may notice that. I have a blinking Rangers hat on. Oh, look at that. This is uh, 
Fancy. Of Chase Bank. Oh, Chase Cardholders. Get your light up Liberty hat today. I didn't even ever see tickets ever go on for Chase Cardholders. Yeah, right? I got this in Las Vegas. Interesting story. I got this at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas. And it was a specialty hat hat. Uh, hat. It has my name on the back, too. Like like Mouseketeers. Yeah, they like Mouseketeers. And I get it. <laughs> and guess who is in the store with me? A famous, a oh, famous guy. You know who it is. Right? <clears throat> Anybody want to guess? Wayne Newton. No, more contemporary. Tom Jones. More contemporary than Tom. More contemporary than Tom Jones. Come on. Chris Martin. Before Chris Martin. But you're in the right, I guess, realm. Bono. Oh, I wish it was Bono. No. Uh, you're around the same the same era, but a different genre of music. Uh <laughs> Siegfried. <laughs> yeah, Siegfried and Roy. Barry Manilow. Oh, Sam yeah. Rosen. He's in the rap industry. Oh, then you lost me. I'll never guess. Snoop. No, before now, I'm done. <laughs> Does anybody have a guess? Little Wayne, 50 Cent. No, before 50 Cent. Run DMC. Okay, All three yeah, of them. You're right around that era a little bit. The Fat Boys. I think both of the fat boys are dead. <laughs> got too fat. James fat Hatfield, boy. very good. Dr. Dre, Puffy, Tupac, no. He is, I'll give it to you right now. He's Biggie. Like, what? Biggie. No, Biggie was it? No. Sir Notorious B No. No. Wu-Tang. Uh, uh, I'll just say it. Hype man. Hype oh, man. Know. I wouldn't know him if I ran him over with my car. No, no, that's what he is. He's a hype man. Oh, I, I just no clue. Ice tea. He ice was cube. Was hype man. Ice cube. Ice cream. Oh. Ice, ice man. Iced milk. <laughs> Slick Rick. Kid Rock. <laughs> These guys are so white. We're gonna sit here till four in the morning now. Uh, it's so white. Vanilla ice. There, yeah, Ben Mueller got it. Oh, flavor, flavor. Flav. He's in there buying, of course, a blinking hat with a pot leaf on it. He's got the clock and everything. And uh, he was a nice guy. That's all I could say. And he had very rough hands. So I, I think he must have done some hard work or hard labor somewhere down the line. Glory Gaynor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was Glory Gaynor. Glory Gaynor. Stephanie Mills. I will survive. So they have the story of me, me meeting Flavor Flav. That's <laughs> no, he didn't give me his baby bottle, but he was with a babe. I think he was doing that show, The Flavor of Love, at the time. Oh, all right. Uh, yes, next week, Flavor Flav on the show. Yo. Yeah, boy. <laughs> He's gonna Can't wait. Celine Dion. Celine Dion. God, Celindia. Oh. It's true, Adam. He has nowhere to go. He's just Roman, Roman Vegas. So, so, <sighs> so that's the story of the blinking hat. Uh, any other things, Robin? Uh, we've got to discuss. So, what? What, what do you? I think the home cooking will rectify a lot of things tomorrow. It's worked before. I get wicked. I'm sorry. Ben knows who Flavor Flav is. It's worked before. So, yep. Yeah, I think I'm on board with that, too. It can work again. And then uh, like the, the Rangers could win tomorrow night, then lose. And then there'll be three, and we'll be back to game seven, but it's at the Garden. We right. don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, Darwin, uh, Flavor Flav, uh, you know, if you got money and and you are a musician that's recognized, I don't care how ugly you are. Uh, that's why I got into it as a youth. The women I had to beat off with in droves. It's not necessarily true in my case, but I guess he has some money. So anyway, 
so yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Now, if they lose tomorrow, like Ryan Leach says, then we're going to get my, the, the music might be queuing up, but still they'll have another game after that. You know, right. and the, you, know uh, you know, if they lose tomorrow night, we've been in that position too. So let's all bond together, pray together, whatever you got to do. Wear your pajamas inside out, do all those superstitions. Right, do all those things you got to do. Pray to whatever God you pray to. <laughs> yes. The, you know, so. So uh, now, did you? are you going to change? You said you're listening to another. Oh, yeah. Are you going to change your dynamic at your house now that they've lost two in a row? Well, last night we weren't on the patio. We were rained out. So the patio right now is nine and two. Okay. So, uh, and the weather forecast looks favorable. We should be on the patio tomorrow night. Although it'll be just me because Jen's working. Okay. So I expect to be out there, but it was, it rained most of the day here yesterday and it was raining on and off. And I was, it was just too much. Yes. And everybody you know, knows I, God loves the New York Rangers best. Yes, yes. Just look at our hundred years of 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 right, prosperity. Remember, it, but but it, it is kind of like Catholicism or or Christian. You know, a lot of pain, a lot of repent, a lot of. I said it years ago. We're the Jews of hockey fans. Yes. So uh, maybe <laughs> we are, we we just keep walking through that desert, man. I go with George Van Horn. If you're going to go all the way with this superstition, you got to be on it, even in the midst of a tornado. Well, uh, you know, game seven, I was on the patio in the middle of a monsoon, but I'm by myself standing under an umbrella, not moving in any direction because it's pouring rain. And then I had to have my TV wedged in a window on the house so that the TV doesn't get wet. You know, I, I don't have to. Sp <laughs> we appreciate the income from Patreon, but it doesn't mean I can just afford to go buy a new TV every game when, true, my, yes. when my TV shorts out from a pouring rainstorm. So yeah, you know, it was it was just a little, it was a little too wet out outside yesterday. I mean, if you guys could have really seen what I had going on here for Game Seven against Carolina in the in the rain, you would have thought I was crazy. But I wasn't leaving the patio because you know things were going well. I think at the I think at about the eight minute mark of that game, and I think the Rangers were up. I forget what it was at that point. Five two, five. I think it was five one, five. But it was five one. I said, "Okay, I, I, I'm good." And I and as soon as I went to commercial, I real quick opened the window, put the TV inside, got all my stuff, and came upstairs to watch the end of the game. So anyway, hey, the garden will be rocking. We're getting that home cooking. I'm uh, confident. Uh, Rangers really didn't give up a lot of shot on goal. I mean. They were just opportunistic. They didn't get outshot like they got in game three. They gave up like 40 shots. Right. In this game, yeah, they had their chances. They converted. The Rangers had nothing five on five. They've got to correct that. And I, I sincerely believe that they got to sit Re Reeves one of these games just to get a fresh. You can bring it back the next game. But, you know, if, 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 if it's warranted, but still sticking with the same thing and it's not working, you know what that is. That's the de definition of insanity and expecting yes, a, a different result. Of course, they were good shots, you know, but still, you keep, tell me Shesty's going to face, you know, 22 shots on net. I'm golden in most right. cases. So, right. so that, that's, that's the dealio where I am. Keep the faith, guys. We win tomorrow. We're in the driver's seat. Uh, I mean, the Rangers aren't getting dominated. They're not getting – they're just very frustrating right now to watch. That's right. the big deal. Um, you know, watching, uh, uh, you know, no goals. and But the Rangers are getting there. We got to believe in the guys. No, no, not like those Fairweather fans who have already jumped ship already. Right. Uh, who uh, Jim is going to email their names uh, so I can uh, – <laughs> I can keep it in the back of my head. So come on, guys. Let's go. The, the game, the, we'll release the names when the Stanley Cup's over. Yes. Come Here on. Go. One last. People texting me now. I don't like the way we match up against the Avs. I'm like, what? 
I can't even think about them yet. Uh, yeah, I'm like I'm I'm in again like I'm in country now. I I can't I, I'm in uh, muck and dung here. You know, fighting the uh, you know the muck and dung. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here one the one clock. final thing for everybody to get you to get you ready. Yes, the muck and dung. What is this? Then? What are we waiting for? Take us. <laughs> All right. We got this. We got this. Let's go, boys. We got them right where we want them. Also, they got to stop. Uh, one other thing, whether a little bugaboo about stop micing up the players, they don't say anything. All right. How many, how many times can you hear a player go, let's go, boys? Let's go, boys. Let's get them, oh, boys. Hey, 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 pass, pass, pass. They should mic all of them and then see who's the most chatty during the season then, and then that's the guy they mock. But just to hear that over and over again, it's useless. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the Vetrano fight. He really, he, the guy wanted to go with him, and Vetrano got him early, and the other guy came back, but I think he got old shield or helmet. Landed, he landed some good. Uh, Vetrano landed the, the better shots. Yeah, I thought this is why I want him back. I want him back. And Maloney was Maloney was goofing on on Hagel for like egging on the crowd, like showing off on his way. Oh to the yeah, he, he put his hand up like he was like uh, right. Maloney's like, yeah, okay. Does he really think he won that fight? Yeah. All right, boys, girls. So, this your Mike Gallant. I'd like to hear what. He I'd like to hear what comes out of that genius during the game. Yeah. He's probably asking uh, Mike Kelly, uh, like, who's that guy? Who's that? Who's 23? <laughs> who's 23? <laughs> they should, they what should are Mike you doing here, me? <laughs> yeah, so let's go. George said it. We can win two out of three. Let's go. Uh, all right. So game – Five is tomorrow, which means we would come back Friday. technically Friday night, but I am otherwise disposed Friday night. <laughs> I will be at Madison Square Garden, actually. <laughs> um, I could do, we could do f- Saturday no Saturday's good. game. Saturday of no good. Saturday's no good during the day. I might be able to squeeze it between. I'm going to see Sammy Hagar that night, but I don't think it's if it's a day game. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it Saturday night. It's an 8 p.m. game Saturday. Saturday's 8 p.m. I I can't do that. Well, no, but we'll be watching. Oh, you mean the game a day? Anyway. I mean, I just mean a wrap up show Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, or I could do like Friday at like noon time yeah, while Jen's asleep. I just can't do it Friday night. So you want to do it Friday at noon? That's up to you. Yeah, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. It's either Friday afternoon or, or early Saturday afternoon. I'd rather have Friday, do Friday night, so I have my Saturday clear. All right. Friday. So you'll be at Sammy Hagar while the Rangers are playing game six. Yeah, yes, I will. I'll I'll DVR it and give you everything. I have nothing to do with whether the Rangers win or lose. So, oh, I know. I'm just asking. I, I would uh, that would like uh, I would just be out of my mind. No, I I if I got like plans that are non stressful over stressful plans, I'm taking the non stressful plans at this. I mean, I'll be looking and keeping up with the score, but I don't have to see every Ranger game. All right, so we'll see you Friday afternoon, twelve o'clock. For uh, the game five wrap up, and uh, Jen will be sleeping, and you can watch from work or you know if you work from home, big day. You just put us in a screen. Adam's watch- already taking his break. See, Adam Bartol, that's good, man. Thank you. What I like to hear. I'm only working a half day Friday because we're going to the city. So, yeah, we could do it. We could do a show for you Friday at twelve, and um, and uh, yeah, then I'm, then we're headed to the city. So, all right, I'm gonna upload if it's okay with you. This show at midnight to our YouTube channel. Okay. Is that fine? Uh, you know, you guys yeah. got the immediate impact, but I want to 
you know, just kind of see what we're talking about on our Patreon show to get more people to want to join the Patreon because, you know, they're missing all this extra stuff that you want to people get. Okay. All Sounds right. Good to me. All right. That'll do it. Guys, we got to believe we got to hang in there. Of course. Rangers, heart and soul. Wonderful season so far. Let's keep it going. All right. We'll see you guys Friday. Let's go, Rangers. Let's get it done tomorrow night. And we'll all be happy on Friday. Okay. We love you. Thanks for your support. Eddie, always a pleasure. No quit in New York, baby. That's right, baby. The blinking lights will resurge us back to a three-game, well, not back, to a three-game to two lead after tomorrow night. Take care, and, uh, Thanks for your patience tonight and waiting for us. I appreciate it. Let's go we'll see you guys me. Sunday or, or Friday and hopefully no computer issues. All right. Take care, everybody. Good night. <laughs>